This has been a long awaited video. I'm going to be breaking down the Moreton Bay region here in Southeast Queensland on a suburb by suburb basis. We're going to be sharing some of my thoughts around the northern, the eastern, the southern locations in Moreton Bay Regional Council and how it fits into the bigger picture here in Greater Brisbane, i.e. Southeast Queensland. Now, my name's Luke and I talk all things real estate, renovating and financial freedom. If you're interested in upping your investment knowledge and taking it to the next level, you can head over to my website at purposeproperty.com.au and you can go over to course and for under 500 bucks, I'll teach you how to build a multi million dollar property portfolio step by step. The course is in a chronological order and it's been really easy to follow. So if you're interested in that, head over to purposeproperty.com.au and click on course. Now let's jump into Moreton Bay Regional Council. Now, as you can see on screen here, we've got a red outline around the Moreton Bay Regional Council. You can see it comes all the way as far down as Strathpine and Brendale. You've got the Hills District down on the south side here. You've got the Redcliffe Peninsula, all the way up to Bribie Island and closing out around Caboolture. Then you've got some far pockets around Belthorpe and Stanmore, which are pretty far out in my opinion. So let's start from the north side and work our way down south towards Brisbane City and go on a general suburb by suburb basis. So you can see on screen here that we've got Bribie Island, we've got Caboolture, Caboolture South, Moray Field, and out west we've got Diagula. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And I'm, I'm a local Queenslander. Um, and then even further, you've got Stanmore and Belthorpe and the National Park out west. Now, for me, if you were looking at the National Park or out west, you'd need a lifestyle property. And I would be looking at an Airbnb or host style property and not really looking for a bread and butter property out that far from the central business district in Brisbane. I'm even thinking about a project like that where you could buy a property on a vineyard or with a lifestyle or with a chapel that you could have uh, weddings or have events. Uh, and, and have an Airbnb and, and have a lifestyle opportunity out that way. But generally for most investors, they're going to be focusing on the Caboolture area and some investors have been looking at Bribie Island. Now, I, my opinions on Bribie is to probably, I would give it a miss. It feels too far from the central business district. There is some landlocked component there, which I like. I like limited land supply, but overall, I don't really like the Bribie area given that it's largely a retirement area and I don't see a lot of future infrastructure or development going into the Bribie area, increasing those incomes and increasing people's ability to pay more for property. Now, in my opinion, you'd be better off going up towards the Sunshine Coast or down towards the Gold Coast if you were looking for a beach location because Bribie is a little bit in no man's land. It has that older character vibe and it is a holiday destination for a lot of people. But in my opinion, I would be looking up towards the Sunshine Coast if you were looking for a Bribie Island type property. When it comes to Caboolture, Morayfield, Belmere and Upper Caboolture, you can zoom in and see here that they've done a lot of subdivisions in the last 20 years. They've been subdividing properties out this way and we're seeing more subdivisions come on around Morayfield and Upper Caboolture. Now for me, I don't like large land subdivisions. I don't like areas where you could buy a new house and land, and I don't like suburbs that are located very close to new house and land subdivisions. The reason is, I like areas that are landlocked and have that limited supply. At its core, property is a game of supply and demand. And if we have continued supply in this area, in this regional pocket in Caboolture, for example, then yes, the city center is landlocked, but there's going to continue to be more and more supply within that 10 or 15 minute radius, which is going to soak up the demand and put less pressure on property prices. So in my opinion, I would be giving Caboolture a miss. For some investors, they go out there for cash flow or for depreciation benefits, but for me, that's not where I would be putting my money. As we head further south, we, we get to more areas which are, again, having land subdivisions. We've got Burpengary, Burpengary East, Narangba, and Deception Bay. Now this is where it is going to get a little bit of fun. So these are probably more known by interstate and local investors. The reason D-Bay is so well known is because it's quite a, or it's been known to be quite a rough area and property prices are very low be, for being a Bayside location. Now I think Deception Bay is going to gentrify. I think that will happen in the next 15 to 20 years. But would I be putting my money in a Deception Bay property? I think the thing is, it comes down to the median price point in D-Bay. It comes down to the potential ability to add value or do a knockdown rebuild. And so if you're buying the right property for the right price, then maybe the Deception Bay is an option for some people. 
Now, for my personal circumstances, I wouldn't be looking at a property in Deception Bay. There's some other suburbs that I would prefer in Moreton Bay Regional Council. But for the money, if you can find the right property and find the right value opportunity with, say, those lifestyle proximity to the water and things like that, that's where Deception Bay might be a good option for some people. Now, Narangbar and Burpengary, I would generally just give a miss. Narangbar uh, has obviously got the motorway with the Bruce Highway running through there. They're also looking at doing the Bruce Highway alternative at some point. Um, and Narangbar also has some newer properties which are on smaller parcels of land. If you're going to be this far from the city in Burpengary, Narangbar, even as far as Kombucha and Moray Field, you'd want at least 600 square meters plus in terms of a block. Now, a lot of the newer blocks on the land subdivisions are 400 square meters, 350 square meters. So be very careful when you're looking at properties and don't get sold on those depreciation benefits. Now, let's head to an area that's been very hot the last 12 months. Uh, in particular because of the new footy club out there as well. Uh, this is the Redcliffe Peninsula. Now you've got Scarborough, Newport, Redcliffe, Margate, Woody Point, Clontarf and Kippering. Now growing up in Brisbane, we knew that the Redcliffe Peninsula felt like a long way away. It was more of a sleepy area, but there's been a lot of investment going into it in the last 20 years. In particular in the Scarborough precinct, you'll see a lot of new high rise buildings. You'll see a lot of couple million dollar homes down in the, uh, the Bay Area here. And so the northern part of the Redcliffe Peninsula has had a lot of investment and will continue to have money flood into that area. Now the lower price point suburbs are in Clontarf, Woody Point and Margate on the south side of the Redcliffe Peninsula. Again, one of the good things about the peninsula is it's landlocked. It's continuing to have money be spent in that area and that's definitely one of the areas I would seriously consider buying in the next five years. I looked at a duplex a few years ago in, in near Margate or in near Kipper Ring, I can't quite remember, for myself, um, when we were looking at apartment blocks and buildings. And so you've got to be wary of the type of buildings that are in this area as well. There's a lot of fibro shacks or beach shacks. And so if you're buying a fibro property, it's going to be more expensive to do knockdowns and it's going to be more expensive to do renovations on. So just be wary of that when you're looking at the Redcliffe Peninsula. Uh, there are a lot of older style properties, but there could be some great opportunities, especially if you can pick up the land at a lower value or there's ability to add value and pull levers on those options. You can see here, this is where the KO Stadium is. This is where the Dolphins are playing and I believe the Roar are playing. I haven't actually driven out and watched the Roar in a long period of time. And so maybe I should head out that way and watch a footy or a soccer game sometime soon. Now we're starting to reach the more dense populations. North Lake, Stackerbin, Mango Hill, Kalanga, Marumba Downs, and Griffin. These are six very different suburbs in my opinion. North Lakes and Mango Hill are more similar. You've got the Westfield Shopping Centre here at North Lakes, the motorway going north and south, north towards the Sunshine Coast and south towards Brisbane City. North Lakes was a land subdivision in the early 2000s, but the properties in North Lakes are superior to the other areas at this point in time, and the prices reflect that. A lot of the development that has gone on in North Lakes has been completed. So that's one of the positive points about North Lakes. Comparing that to Dakabin, where a lot of the suburb is continuing to be subdivided and there's not as good options and Dakabin's a little bit more commercial and industrial than North Lakes is and Kalanga is at this point in time. So for my money out of the six options, I would be going for Kalanga. It's got access to the train line. It's got average homes on 600 square meters. Generally, they're brick homes with the ability to add value. And so as long as you're finding a nice pocket between these you know, family-friendly streets, avoiding the main roads, avoiding the thoroughfares, being wary of the Bruce Highway alternative that's likely to cut through Petrie in the next 10 to 15 years, then Kalanga would be my pick of the suburbs in that cluster in terms of the price and the value that you can buy the property at. Now, when it comes to Marumba Downs and Griffin, these are generally new house and land packages on 300 square meters. Now, I just don't like those styles of properties. The land component is too low. The building component is too high. And if you're looking there for your own home, go for it. Buy that property, put the stake in the ground and that's your own home, that's okay. But when it comes to an investment opportunity, we wanna maximize the growth potential. We wanna maximize the levers that we can pull to create value. And in my opinion, a property in Griffin or Marama Downs isn't the right option for me. Now we're getting to the most southern suburbs leading into Brisbane City Council before we head to the Hills District. We've got Launton, Bray Park, Joyner, Petrie, Warner and Strathpine. Now these would be my main picks. They're closer to Brisbane City Council. They've got 
decent commuting distance to Brisbane. The price points are around that six to 700K mark at this point in time. You could be looking for double blocks or corner blocks on 800 square meters with subdivision potential or a standard bread and butter home on 600 square meters if you can find that property for the right price. One of the great things is the University of Southern Queensland here um, at the Mill Water Park. Uh, you can see that the uni's been open there for a few years and that's generally taking off, which is great. So the area's had some money go into it. It's continuing to gentrify. Prices have been rising. And so for my money so far, based on all the suburbs, I'd be looking at the peninsula and this cluster of suburbs from Kalanga South. Of course, you need around five to 700K to get into these markets, but I think that's a reasonable price point for most investors. Now let's head much further south, across the conservation park, down towards the Hills District. So you've got Eaton Hill, Albany Creek, Arana, Everton Hills, and Fernie Hills. Now I'm gonna come out and call it that I think the Hills District is a little bit overpriced. It's very hot and has been continuing to grow and in my opinion is probably not at the value point that I would have liked it where I saw it a few years ago. Emily and I almost, almost bought a property uh, in about late, um, early 2020 I should say, for around the $550,000, $600,000 mark in the Hills District. We ended up going a few suburbs across from the Hills District. I can let you do some research in those areas, but Talking about the hills, I think it's had some great growth. Very family friendly, backs onto the Bunya Conservation Park. It's got walking tracks, sporting facilities. Uh, it's got the dump ground, which is great if you're doing renovations. Uh, it's got some great shopping centers there. So it's a very established area. It's got some lifestyle factors in the Bunya Conservation Park with it. Uh, and the price points are around that 800K to a million dollars, depending on what property you're buying. Now, a little bit north of these pockets in the Hills District, you've got Albany Creek and Eaton's Hill. Albany Creek is again a leafier area, can be quite hilly, and Eaton's Hill is gentrifying. There are some good and bad pockets in Eaton's Hill as well. So the big thing about these areas are the price points. Whether it's the Hills District or Albany Creek Eaton's Hill, you're probably looking closer to a million dollars for a standard family home when you compare that to the further north options, which could be around that 700 to 600K mark. So if you're looking to buy at a higher price point, you're looking for more access to amenity, more lifestyle, more choices for kids and things like that, that's where Albany Creek or the Hills District might be the right option. Again, when you're looking at a deal, you've got to look at a property on a property or a deal by deal basis. And so it comes down to finding the right deal in those locations. The last cluster of suburbs are out on the Western Corridor of Moreton Bay Regional Council. We've got Camp Mountain, Sanford Valley, uh, Cobble Creek, King Scrub, uh, the list goes on all out on the western side. Now, most of my focus in today's video has been on the eastern corridor, following the Bruce Highway north to south on a suburb by suburb basis. For my money, like I said at the start, you'd be looking at lifestyle properties. In particular, Sanford's really known as a wealthy area because people go and retire on acreages in, in those locations. And so when you're looking at these types of options, you've got to find really large parcels of land that you could potentially sell to a developer or do a subdivision down the track. You've also got to be aware of creeks and flooding and that type of risk as well. And so for my money, I like to stick to the established areas that have been built up at least 20 plus years. And that's why my focus would be on these pockets around the Redcliffe Peninsula, around North Lakes, Kalanga, Launton, Strathpine. And if you have the money and you find the right deal around Albany Creek and the Hills District. I hope this video has given you a much better picture of the Moreton Bay Regional Council. Talking through the opportunities, the some of the pros and some of the cons of each of these locations. Now this is not to have a dig at the suburbs. This is not to have a dig at owner occupiers in any of these spots. Whether it's Deception Bay, whether it's the Peninsula, whether you're in Caboolture, whatever the suburb is, it's not to have a dig. It's to talk about what I think from an investment opportunity might suit an investor. If you're interested in sitting down and having a chat with myself and looking to buy a property here in the Southeast Queensland market in the next few months, head over to purposeproperty.com.au to book in a free strategy session with myself. We'll have a chat about your situation, what you're looking to achieve, the services that we offer, and how we can help you secure a property here in the greater Brisbane market. Also, if you wanna see a breakdown of the Northern suburbs here in Brisbane, click this video over here. Thanks for sticking around. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.